Mr. Prime Minister, we have a, a global situation here. Uh, the world uh, community was not able to do anything in relation to Russia as far as Iran was concerned. Uh, then came Syria. Uh, the world didn't take up your call uh, in relation to standing up to Russia. Now we have Ukraine. Uh, Mr. Putin has not, uh, no surprise, uh, taken any consideration of the political uh, or, or diplomatic harshness that has come. Is there any way that Canada uh, has opportunity to influence NATO as far as military or, or economic help? First of all, I, th I think it's important that we put this in context. I don't think what happened over the weekend can be compared with Russia's support for a, a bad regime in Syria or Iran. We're now talking about uh, President Putin's own actions. Uh, his own actions as president of Russia in invading sovereign territory that is clearly not his. And this is on a whole different scale. And frankly, this is, uh, you know, this is really a throwback to another kind of era. Um, um, invading a territory claiming just because they're ethnic minorities. This is the kind of thing we saw before the Second World War. And this is without precedent in the modern era. And so it obviously requires a specific con condemnation. Um, I would say this, um, first of all, without going into specifics, obviously um, we're working very closely with all of our G7 partners. And I think there is a pretty strong consensus over not just diplomatic measures, but over looking at a whole range of diplomatic and economic measures that can be taken. And what I would say, and I believe will be the feeling of our G7 partners, is these are not merely short-term measures. Um, this will be, um, this is going to be, in my judgment, a serious breach between Russia and our Western friends until this is repaired. And this could be a very long time. Um, this is not just going to be condemnation this weekend. This is going to be, should Mr. Putin continue on this path, should he not see fit, to respect the territorial integrity of Ukraine, as, as I said, I think this will be a matter of, uh, of, of bad relations and a series of diplomatic and economic actions that are going to go on for some time uh, until he withdraws. And Mr. Prime Minister, you spoke earlier with the Prime Minister of Ukraine, I Mr. Did. Yatsenyuk. How, what, what was discussed in that conversation? Well, look, the primary reason for my conversation was just to convey to the Prime Minister of Ukraine that at this difficult time, he can be assured that the Canadian population, Canada, and I'm not just referring to our Ukrainian Canadian community, but the Canadians stand absolutely behind Ukraine. We're behind Ukraine in friendship, in support of Ukraine's independence, of its territorial integrity, and of its Euro-Atlantic aspirations. And uh, these are things that are not going to change. Um, obviously, that government has enormous challenges in front of it, not just the challenges uh, Mr. Putin is presenting, but also financial challenges, governance challenges in terms of new elections. And Canada certainly will be uh, standing ready and working with the new Ukrainian authorities to assist uh, what is obviously going to be a very difficult transition process. We're, you know, look, I've said this before, we're obviously, notwithstanding the sadness we have at what has occurred in the last uh, three days, we have really tremendous admiration for the Ukrainian people in standing up virtually unarmed against an attempt to take the country back to the past, back to a Soviet past, against the will of the people. We're very impressed that Ukrainians stood up to that, as they say, stood up to brutality with, with virtually no arms to fight back with, and have come this far. And um, we know that the Ukrainian people are in this for the long term, and we're in this for the long term with them. Uh, Mr. Prime Minister, have you had opportunity to uh, discuss either with uh, the President of the United States or with other uh, EU members about some kind of joint uh, joint action or, or, or action that's sort of coordinated in relation to all of this? I, I have been speaking with other uh, G7 leaders over the past couple of weeks and I spoke with President Obama on Saturday. And as you know, the G7, um, Canada, the United States, the major European powers and <coughs> Japan, we have now all put out statements indicating that we are all ceasing our preparations for the G8 in Sochi um, and working at coordinating our other actions. Um, look, I think that under President Putin, Russia has been moving farther and farther away from the 
democratic ideals of an advanced economy um, in so many ways. And I think um, this is obviously a new level. But I think we're all sending a pretty clear signal, as I said today, that should Russia not change I its behavior, its expulsion from the G8 will become inevitable. And, um, and, and as I say, then really, uh, you know, then Russia, uh, look, Russia will still have some friends, but in many ways Russia will find itself uh, treated as an outlaw state by much of the world.